I am Dr. Khalid Amin Khan from Oil and Gas Development Company, Pakistan. Our main author is Sana Kiani, along with other co-authors from Qaid Azam University, Islamabad. The title of our presentation is Site Characterization Using Geotechnical and Earthquake Engineering Parameters Derived from Seismic Refraction and Uphold Logging Survey in Rawat Area, Upper Indus Basin, Pakistan. In this work, I will be presenting a case study of site characterization using geotechnical parameters derived from seismic refraction and uphold logging data. This is the SEG copyright notice. This is the outline of this presentation. We start with the main objectives of this study, then some introduction about refraction method and their near surface applications. This is followed by a review of the overall workflow used in computation of engineering parameters. Then we focus towards our study area, the survey data acquisition parameters, some processing outputs, and the computation of shear velocities and elastic moduli. Finally, we compute the engineering parameters and the resulting site characterization for engineering works. And at the end, the conclusions of the study are presented. The main objectives of this study are to estimate seismic wave velocities in the study area from seismic refraction and uphole logging survey, map the distribution of various geotechnical and earthquake engineering parameters, and provide reliable site characterization for engineering works. The seismic refraction surveys are generally carried out to map the near surface layers along with their velocity information and derive geotechnical parameters before the construction of any heavy industrial zone or highways. A near surface survey comprising of uphole locking and seismic refraction is carried out in Rivat area near the twin cities of Rawalpindi Islamabad to map the spatial distribution of various geotechnical parameters for site characterization. This is the workflow for computation of geotechnical parameters. The digital elevation model is used for slope analysis and generation of shaded relief map. The seismic refraction and uphold logging data processing provides the thickness and compressional velocities of near surface layers. These compressional velocities are used to compute density and shear wave velocity distribution in the study area. Subsequently, the average shear wave velocity of the top 30 meters of soil is computed, which is required in computation of various engineering parameters. Once we have the P and S wave velocity as well as density information, we can compute all the elastic moduli such as bulk modulus, shear modulus, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, as well as VPVS ratio. These parameters are used to compute geotechnical properties like allowable bearing pressure and standard penetration test, and earthquake engineering properties such as soil fundamental period, soil amplification factor, average horizontal spectral amplification for weak and strong motion and finally site characterization map is generated based on the building codes. The study has been carried out over an area of 80 square kilometers in the surroundings of Rawat towards southeast of Rawalpindi Islamabad. Geographically the area lies in the northeastern part of Putwar Plateau upper in this basin. The Putwar is a four-land fold and thrust belt of Himalaya origin that is surrounded by Kala Chitta ranges and Margala hills in the north, the Indus River and Kuhar Plateau to the west, the Jhelum River and the Hazara Kashmir Syntaxis to the east and Salt Range Formation in the south. The exposed formations in the area are Murray and Kamlyal of Miocene age, Chinji and Nagri of Pliopleistocene age. 
These formations are mostly composed of sandstone and clays, which are weathered into soil comprising of sand, silt, and reddish clays. An integrated survey comprising of 44 uphole logging points and 16 seismic refraction points with forward reverse shooting geometry is carried out. The uphole logging has a circular geometry with geofoam offsets at 1, 2, and 3 meters and a hole depth of 65 meters with 20 shots at different depth intervals. The seismic refraction on the other hand has a spread length of 250 meters with 24 geofoams. This is the base map of the study area along with elevation contour map. The area has an undulating topography with an average elevation of 650 meters above mean sea level. The processed velocity and thickness data from seismic refraction and uphole points is interpolated to generate a regular grid covering the whole study area as shown on the map. This is the dip map of the study area and its surroundings, indicating a stable topography with dips below 10 degrees. These are some outputs from data processing. We can see first break picking on refraction and uphole seismic records and the related time distance graphs. The data processing provides the thickness and velocity information of near surface layers. This is a 3D visualization of topography, thickness of weathered layer, and compressional velocities of weathered and sub weathered layers. The shear wave velocity is computed from compressional velocity using Lee's transform for unconsolidated rocks. Here we can see the shear wave velocity distribution for weathered and sub weathered layers. Finally, we have the average shear wave velocity map for the top 30 meters of soil, which is required for computation of various engineering parameters. The velocity information is used to compute the density and porosity distribution in the study area. Using compressional and shear wave velocity along with density, we can compute the spatial distribution of various elastic moduli such as bulk modulus and shear modulus. Similarly, we can compute the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio for the weathered and sub-weathered layers. These parameters are indicators of ground strength. Finally, using the previously computed parameters, we derive a range of geotechnical and earthquake engineering parameters that are useful in site characterization. Allowable bearing pressure is the maximum average contact pressure between the foundation and the soil, which should not produce shear failure in the soil. The color map of allowable bearing pressure for the study area indicates that the zones highlighted with red color are suitable for civil engineering works. Soil amplification is a phenomena observed in many earthquakes where the strength of shaking increases abnormally in areas where shallow geologic layers have low seismic velocity. The color map of soil amplification factor indicates that most of the stable zones in the study area are highlighted by blue color. As earthquake waves propagate through soil media, their amplification or attenuation is mainly dependent on the soil fundamental natural period. The color map of soil fundamental period indicates that most of the area highlighted by green color has soil fundamental period around 0.6 seconds which gives good response to high frequencies while some clusters of pink color in the south indicate higher values around 1 second which gives response to low frequencies. It can also be seen that some patches of cyan color have low values up to 0.2 seconds. These are the most stable zones in the study area. The seismicity of an area can be determined from average horizontal spectral amplification for weak and strong motion in the period range of 0.4 to 2 seconds. Average horizontal spectral amplification represents the site response 
in every microzonation study, where the strong motion represents the main earthquake, while the weak motion represents the aftershocks. The contour map of average horizontal spectral amplification for strong motion indicates that the zones highlighted with blue color have the lowest spectral amplification and therefore are suitable for construction works. Standard penetration test is a measure of the loading capacity of ground. It is an in-situ dynamic penetration test which provides information on the geotechnical engineering properties of soil. The color map of standard penetration test shows that the areas having values greater than 25 are suitable for construction works. The National Earthquake Hazard Reduction Program has developed soil classes based on average shear wave velocity of the top 30 meters of soil. As can be seen in the table, soil class A represents the most stable region, while class E represents the most unstable region for civil engineering works. The study area has been characterized using this classification. The site characterization map indicates that site classes D and E, highlighted by red color, represent stiff soil and therefore these zones are not suitable for construction works. From this study, it is concluded that geophysical techniques such as seismic refraction and uphole locking can be used as viable tools for engineering studies and site characterization. Computation of multiple geotechnical engineering and seismicity parameters helps in reliable site characterization. Integrated interpretation of these parameters indicates that the central region of the study area, a little towards east, is most suitable for construction of an industrial zone. Thank you.